I'm going to tell you how to do the twosie foursie method for putting a quilt together. I learned this from Mary Ellen Hopkins and it changed my life. It's the fastest and the easiest way to put a quilt together. Now I'm going to show you this in miniature, but pretend that each of these blocks is a pieced block like this. So you'd have this all laid out. And that's the first thing you're going to do when you, anytime you put a quilt together, is you're going to lay it out on the floor or on a bed and make sure you've got all the blocks in the right place. Um, so the first thing you do after you lay it out is you take, you always start in the top left corner and you go down. So left corner top and you put the right sides together going all the way down the row. When you get to the bottom of the row, you're gonna leave those there for now. Back up to the top, and put these twosies together. So this is the twosie part. And we're gonna sew along the edge here. Once you get all of your columns twosied, you're going to stack each column up. So start at the top left and go down just like you did before. When you get to the bottom, leave them there. Okay, once you get all of your columns in stacks, then you're going to stack all these stacks up. So take the one on the left, put it on the one next to it, on the one next to it. And now you have your entire quilt in your hand. Now, it's really important that you know what side of the block you're going to sew on. So you always sew on the right side. And once I pick this up, I'm going to walk over to my machine and I might get turned around and, and make a mistake. So you do what I call the grip of death. You grab the right side of your blocks and you grip as hard as you can because you don't want to forget which side it is that you're going to sew on. So grip of death, real important. Next, I'm going to take this over to the machine and show you how to chain sew them. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine. I've laid my stack of blocks down with the right side facing the machine because I know I'm going to sew that side. I'm going to pick each one of these up individually, match that right raw edge, and I've drawn a line on my sewing machine with a marker so I can easily see where that quarter inch seam is going to be. I'll start with a leader strip. I'll show you how to use those in a minute, and I just start sewing. Go to the next one. Make sure you just got two. Make sure you know what side you're sewing on. I kind of turn it up and then lay it down again. And I just chain through without stopping. And I'm going to do this to the entire stack of blocks. This is what we call twosies. So this is my last two squares that I'm sewing together. They're all chained together in one long continuous string. And I'm going to finish up with a leader strip, which is just a couple of folds of fabric to feed under the feed dogs so that it'll make it easier to um, not get your threads caught. You might notice that I sew almost exclusively with a medium gray thread, top and bottom. Now I'm going to start at the last couple of squares and I'm going to cut them apart and stack them up. This is the last one and stack them up with these 
right side where the seam is. This really is easier with big blocks, but we can, we can get the idea. Now, if I've done this correctly, this is going to be the top left couple of blocks on my quilt. So let's go over to the place where we're laying out our quilt top and lay them out and see what we've done. Okay, we've brought our blocks, our twosies, back to the place where we're laying out our quilt. And we're gonna start at the top left and go down just the way we picked them up in the first place. There's one twosie. So I guess you've noticed I've made a mistake. That's to show you that once you get your, your quilt top laid out again, you need to be sure everything is in the right order. I have turned this one. All I have to do is turn it like this. It helps if you take a photo with your phone when you've got the blocks all laid out initially and you can keep that beside you and check it against what you're doing. So now we've done our twosies. Next up is foursies. And if I were, if this were on the floor and I was picking them up off the floor, I would be standing here and I would walk up and turn around and face this way. I'm going to move the board instead. And once again, I'm going to stop in the, start in the top left corner from the side. So these are our foursies. So I'm going to put right sides together again. Now what side of the blocks are we gonna be sewing on? On the right side. Now we stack up our blocks like we did with our twosies. And once again, we're gonna grab it with the grip of death. This is the side we're gonna sew on. I'll take it over to the sewing machine and show you the next step. Okay, we're back at the sewing machine. I put my blocks next to my machine with the right side, the side that I'm going to be sewing on facing the machine. So once again, I'm gonna grab the top two and I'm gonna sew the twosies together into foursies. Now this is important. Your sewing machine has feed dogs on the bottom, so it moves the fabric at a very consistent pace. The, the uh, presser foot, not so much. So you want your, um, your bottom and your top to go through the same speed. So what we're gonna do is, if at all possible, we're going to always put the seams offset with the one going into the machine, facing the machine, and the one underneath, away from the machine. This helps because there's this nice little ridge that holds those together and you get a nice crisp joint. I'm gonna chain these through just like I did the single twosies. holding those together, I can feel them bumping up against each other. And that's gonna keep my seams offset. And you can see, hopefully you can see, how nice and perfect that joint is when you offset them and sew them with the top seam allowance going into the machine and the bottom seam allowance is going away from the machine as you sew. So 
So I'm going to finish sewing all these twosies into foursies. And then I'll come back and we'll see where to go from there. So this is my last set of twosies that I'm going to sew into a foursie. I'm going to do the same thing we did with the, the twosies. I'll make sure those are interlocked and the edges meet. Okay, my whole quilt is in foursies now. I'm going to take these blocks to the iron next. You didn't have to iron the twosies, but you're going to have to iron every step after that. So we're going to pick up over at the ironing station. So here we are at the ironing station. I still got that last seam on the right side. I'm going to take each set of, or each foursie, and I'm going to press down the seams that are committed. So if you'll look at this block, you'll see that I have committed this seam allowance to go that way and that to go that way. So now is as good as time as any to press that so that we'll know they're, they're committed. So I do it usually from the front. The main thing you don't want to do is to press, you want to leave this free seam allowance open. Make sure you don't, now this when you're pressing, you've added another step. So what I'm going to do is, I know this is the top left block. I'm After I press, I'm gonna turn it over so that when I turn the whole stack over, when I turn the whole stack over, the, the left top left will be on top. You can see I've turned it but I'm just making sure that I turn it one more time. And I'm just pushing, pushing against those seam allowances. Turn and turn again and put it upside down. So I'm gonna go through all these blocks and press the committed seams. It's a real important part to 2 z 4 z It's gonna save you lots of time and lots of mistakes later on. So I'm gonna go through and do all of those and then I'll pick up again. So we picked up this particular group of squares uh, from the side. Here's the top, this is the side. So we need to lay them out that way one more time to keep things straight. So I'm gonna start at the top left This particular quote unquote quilt has six blocks by eight blocks. So I know that's one of the rows. So now that I'm through with my foursies, I need to walk back to the bottom of my quilt and start from there. I'm gonna twist the board so we can do that. So I walk from here, <laughs> sorry, to here. And now this is the way the quilt, this is the top of the quilt, these are the sides. So what do we do now? Well, we're gonna do twosies again. And so I'm going to lay the right one on top of the top left one. And if you'll notice, this seam is not committed. So I can, again, when I sew this, I can once again match or offset those seams before I slow that down. So let's make sure I've got this right. Okay. Okay. Top to bottom from the le top left side. Now, you'll notice I don't have another set of foursies to do with these. So these blocks are just gonna live here for a while, and all I'm gonna do is sew the right side 
of these forces. So we're gonna to go to the machine now. So we're back at our machine with our blocks. We put the sewing side next to the machine. So I know I'm gonna sew all of these sides. And once again, I'm going to make sure that these are offset. The one on top goes towards the needle. The one on the bottom goes away from the needle. And I can look and match those up perfectly. Takes care of all the bulk too. You don't have seam allowances on top of seam allowances. So I'm gonna sew. Now I want you to notice that my edges don't quite match. It's okay. As long as you are matching your seams, your quilt is gonna be perfectly square. Every so often the sides stretch, but it's the seams offset with each other that make the difference. So don't pay attention if that's just a little off. Go ahead and sew it, it's gonna be fine. And just notice one more time that I've always got the right side the seams on the right side. If you just are consistent about that, you're not gonna have any trouble. Now, um, you see now I've committed these seams, both this one and this one. So I need to go ahead and press those. Anytime you commit a seam, you're gonna press it. I know if I were to not press this and I were to start sewing, I might not know which direction that goes, but if it's pressed down, I'm gonna be sure and do it in the right place. So we're gonna go back to the ironing board and go from there. So here we are getting at our ironing station. Seam that we just sewed is on the right side. We're gonna pull this over and keep the orientation the same. Open it up. You could press it from the back, but it's more precise if you press it from the front. So I'm going to push that apart. It's easier for me to, to, to uh, press away, so I'm gonna turn it and do it on this side. And once again, once I'm done with that, I'm gonna turn it one more time so it's the right orientation. And as you can see, all the seams that are committed have been pressed down. The one that's not committed yet is not pressed down. I forgot to do them upside down. So it's going to be this, this, and this. Don't forget, as I said, in this case, it doesn't make any difference, but when you're working, you want to, the top one is on top when you start pressing, and then it's gonna be on the bottom unless you turn them over. Now you'll notice that every time I lay down and pick up all of my blocks, I've got fewer blocks to sew. So this gets easier and easier. It's just the first couple of rounds that are kind of tricky. So let's go back to the place where we're laying out our little quilt top and see what happens next. Okay, here we are with our, what I call eightsies, two foursies sewn together. This one should go on the top left and down the column. Now we're going to 
walk around to the side of our quilt where this will be the top left. One more time. Okay, now you can see that I've got twosies again. I've got this twosie and this twosie. This twosie, so this is where we pick up those extra blocks. Anytime you have a quilt top with blocks that are not multiples of four, you're gonna always, when you're doing twosie, foursie, you're going to always have some left out that you'll pick up later as you progress. This had six by eight, so um, six is not div divisible by four, so that's why I had those extra ones. So I'm gonna do my same little routine, this on top of this, this on top of this, and this on top of this. Okay, here we are again at the sewing machine, and we're gonna sew this right side. Remember, I had the grip of death to get it over here, and I know this is the side I'm gonna be sewing on. So I picked this up, and what's happened here? Well, these seams are, are pressed down, so that means they're already sewn down in the direction they've been pressed. So I'm just gonna to have to match those seams as best I can. I'm not, it's not with the top seam allowances going into the needle, but the way that they are committed. So that's gonna be down on the top and up on the bottom. This is where you have to really be careful because the bottom block tends to move this way and there's nothing to stop it. So you have to be sure you're sewing those two seam allowances together. This is a longer twosie. And all of these are committed except for this one. This one's not committed. So this one seam I can mat I can do my with my typical pressing. I can go up on top and down on the bottom. But these have to be sewn in the direction that they're already pressed. That's why pressing is so important. You can see which way the seam allowances are supposed to go. And this, these loose seam allowances are going in my typical way. Top seam allowances towards the machine, bottom seam allowances away. And here I just need to make sure those are touching. I'm pushing down pretty hard on this, um, these couple of seams to make sure that they sew correctly. Notice again, I am not matching the edges or the end edges. I'm matching the edge of the side we're sewing on and especially the seams. The seams are matching. That's gonna make it perfectly square. Here's a loose seam and so is this one. So they wanna go the opposite direction that I want them to go, but we wanna stay with our system so that it all works out in the end. So ignore what the fabric tells you it wants to do. Just stick with the system. Anytime you can have seam allowances going towards the needle, do it. Back at the ironing station, now we're going to press the seams that are committed. See, these are not. And these are not. All three of these seams are not committed. So we're not gonna press anything there. Turn that block upside down. But this one, this is a new seam, and this seam allowance has been cap captured, and it needs to be ironed down. Turn it upside down. 
again. No new seams have been committed. So we're just gonna pass that one and just press this one that's just been sewn down. So we're still on our side and we need to lay the blocks out just the way we pick them up. Top left, one below it, top again, bottom again. Okay, so we go from, from top to side, so now it's time to turn or walk around to the other side and pick up our next set of twosies. Actually, it's, I don't know how many squares it is, but it's, tip, it's two squares that we're putting together. Right side, grip of death, to the sewing machine. Okay, this time around, we only have two blocks to sew together. So let's start matching the seams and the sewn edge and sew these puppies. This one is loose, so we're gonna make it go into the needle and away from the needle on the bottom. This one also is loose, but this one, to see that this one is pressed, so I'm going to have to press the top seam allowance towards me and not towards the needle. And that's why it's so nice to have those pressed down because there's no question about which way they're already committed. So there's one. And here's the other half of the quilt. Okay, top half up here, bottom half. Now we've got, we don't need to go to the side to see our twosies. We can actually see what we need to sew our last seam together. These are uncommitted, so those are the only ones we're gonna be able to choose which way the seam allowances go. So I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew on the right side. So we can see that we still have one seam that's not committed and we'll just let that one go whichever direction it wants to go. But this one needs to go that way and this one needs to go that way. So let's press those. is set the seam and let it go that direction because we want all our seams lying down. If you look at it, you'll see that there's no place where the seams are doubled up. The seam allowances are doubled up. You see what I do at this point is I go ahead and Press the entire quilt top, just so that it'll lie flat and straight. And voila! Your quilt top is ready. The last thing I want to show you is if you get to this point and you decide you want to use borders, there's a right way and a wrong way to add borders to the edges. So let's, that's my last little tip for twosies, foursies. 
So a nice way to finish your quilts is to add a border. And one thing, good thing about a border is it, tight, it, it encloses all these loose ends that haven't been tied off. So it's a nice way to, to finish it. After you cut your strips that you want to go along the edges, the size or the width you want them to be, the first thing you're going to do is make a perfect perpendicular cut. That'll either be the top or the bottom. Okay, now you're, when I first started making quilts, what I would do is I would measure one side and I would sew that on, and then I'd measure the other side and sew that on. But if you look at this quilt closely, you'll see that there's a lot of variation in, this is just a tiny one, variation in the, um, the width. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna always measure our borders from the center of the quilt. So I'm lining these up together. I'm gonna put, this is the middle of the quilt. I'm gonna match that with that. I'm gonna pull these taut, not taut, but just loosely let them stay on top. So I'm just kind of smoothing those down. And now I know that this is where I want to cut my strips. They're gonna be both exactly the same size. So when I sew them on either end, they're going to make both sides actually be identical in length. Okay, I'm gonna sew these on and I'll be right back. So once you get the long sides done, you can see they're perfectly matched they're the same side right and left, which is something really hard to do when you're making a big quilt. I also will tell you that I always press toward the, the, um, the, the borders because there's so much bulk on this side. And I do back stitch. I back stitch when I put these on. So I've got this laid out. And now I want to put borders on the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do is, again, measure down the middle. Let's see if I have enough here. Oh yeah, I have enough from one left over. Usually we'll have to put um, several strips together to make a border long enough. But let's do this one more time. Let's start in the middle, match the raw edges. Move it down. And now I'm going to sew these on the ends. So here's your finished quilt. It should be perfectly square and it should lie pretty flat. I also will sometimes, uh, almost always when my quilt top is finished, I'll spray it with starch or sizing so that it really sets those seams. I noticed that I got one seam turned right here and it makes me crazy because it's four seam allowances on top of each other. I'll probably take that back to the machine and redo that. But other than that, it lies as flat as it possibly can lie because all of the seams, except for that one, are offset. Now, if this is confusing to you, I have other videos or slideshows that will show you how to do this with um, diagrams and step-by-step -step instructions. Um, and uh, after you've done it a couple of times, you won't go back to any other way to put a quilt together. So good luck with twosies, foursies.